This video, we're going to take a look at the Mario DLC we didn't get. The updates that were either heavily rumored, found inside game files, or even outright teased for these popular Switch titles that ended up getting rejected. With Mario Kart 8 Deluxe now getting DLC after 5 years, it's gotten me thinking about ideas that we're going to experience here that may have been planned long ago that we just never got until now. It's shown that we can never truly say never when it comes to DLC, but it is a special case considering its massive sales, and with games like Odyssey, Maker, and more ceasing their updates and sequels undoubtedly on the way, it's safe to say that at this point for many of the games that we're going to cover today, DLC is now likely out of the question, and it'll be interesting to uncover what we didn't get in the originals. What should get carried over into new versions? What's most likely staying in the trash? And why was it all scrapped anyway? What were the real reasons for this? I'm going to try to cover every major instance of rejected DLC today, but I'm probably bound to forget something, so the comments might be a good read today. From cut game styles in Mario Maker 2, to Kingdom's outright plan to be in Mario Odyssey that got removed, to... Yeah, it's safe to say that there's a lot to cover here. Before we jump into it, a large portion of people who watch my content aren't actually subscribed, so I just wanted to give you a reminder if you ended up enjoying the video, maybe tick that bell icon. And just to have some backup in case Nintendo, you know, um, comes after me like some other creators, we've got a sponsor today. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over the mobile market, bringing it its first true console level experience, and gaming will never be the same. While some of the titles we're going to talk about today may never be updated again, Raid's updates haven't stopped, with there now being over 600 champions to build your dream team with. When playing the game recently, I've really taken a liking to some of the champions, with the legendary class Abyss using her enemy's strength against them, Ignatus having such a cool design with a gameplay style seamlessly fitting into any team composition, and Norog which has great defensive stats as well. So what's new in Raid? Well they've got a lot happening this month with a fresh rotation of the Brutal Hydra boss and a ton of events and tournaments held every single day including some special Valentine's Day events where you can get your hands on a brand new legendary champion. This is the best time to get started in Raid and if you click the link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen you get a free starter pack worth almost $30. We're talking a free epic champion Aina, 200k silver, over one energy refill, an XP boost, and an ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. This value is insane, but it's only available to new players for the next 30 days, so be sure to claim it now while you still can. One of the most infamous cases of rejected Mario DLC was in Super Mario Maker 2, with this one single screen sparking so much speculation, excitement, and anticipation throughout the community for it all to amount to nothing. So what was this, what happened here, and more importantly, what could it have been? The main draw for Mario Maker 2 was the addition of the 3D World game style, one which, while it had its obvious problem of you not being able to switch directly to it from the four pre-existing ones and it lacking some critically important features, at least it showed us that Nintendo was open to doing something new here. We never got 3D World's gameplay style in 2D before, it was a change of pace, so you could get an experience from Mario Maker 2 that you've never played anywhere else. And based on the menu with 3D World in it being labeled as quote, extra game game styles, plural, with there being space for two here, there had to be another one, at least one more to fill it out. Right? It's like Smash Ultimate leaving out spaces for new stages in the original screen. While it wasn't a given that they'd add more, it was still implied. And with Mario Maker having a line in here too, it sealed the deal for many, but even after the many free updates of content, we simply never got a new game style added there, which was really strange. Now there was a counter-argument to this line brought up by some fans, and it's that Japanese has no marker for plurals in their written language, so for the English translation team, there would be no way to differentiate between whether they just meant one or more. But if this was truly a mistake, why didn't they make the 3D World logo take up the full space of the box, or at least center it to make it look better. Don't just leave the fans wanting more content that you simply are not planning to provide, or maybe they were planning on providing it but just had to cancel it somewhere down the line. In the final update to Mario Maker 2, an important item was added in, being the mushroom from Super Mario Bros. 2. This being from the Mario 2, which was based on the Japanese title Doki Doki Panic, which had a completely different gameplay style as compared to the other 2D Mario styles that were already in the game. You can pick up enemies with this power-up, jump on most of them without hurting yourself, a bunch of other unique stuff was added to it that led to many in the community believing that this was originally planned to be a full-on game style at one point, but they had to cut it due to a lack of development time. I made a video shortly after Mario Maker 2 came out a few years ago that got a lot of people mad over talking about how I felt Nintendo was under strict pressure to rush out this game. There was no online with friends at launch, none of the extra little quirks that made the original Mario Maker unique, no amiibo support, all of which supports this theory that this power-up could have originally have been planned to be so much more with the unique level styles, enemies, and bosses that made Mario 2 unique, but it likely got rejected at some point. However, this may not have been the only rejected game style. In this same update, we got a Link power-up which gives Mario the abilities of his to use from the original Legend of Zelda, like swinging the sword, angling shots from it, the famous downward spike, which all could 
could have potentially been used in a Zelda theme, which would have been awesome. I know a lot of fans want to see an official Zelda maker sometime, which I'd totally be down for, but seeing the original Zelda style in the Mario gameplay format would have been a ton of fun. But again, potentially for time-saving purposes, this was reduced to a power-up, which is still better than nothing, however the potential was definitely bigger than this. However, even though we have lots of reason to believe that these were rejected game styles, it's not hard evidence, and many prior to the game's launch believed that another 3D Mario game effectively turned 2D in a similar vein to 3D world would have been a lot more likely for the second extra game style. Particularly Mario 64 or Odyssey, which both could have had their merits, with 64 being the classic, with the more iconic look that likely would have been easier to create and not take as much spotlight away from the 3D world one, with Odyssey in contrast being more unique, justifying its incompatibility with the original 4 while also promoting a new game. There were other possibilities for sure, but these were the main ones, yet neither was included. None were included, and this opportunity for DLC was completely rejected, and it just makes me sad. We may never see them unless we get a Mario Maker 3 or a possible Mario Maker 3D, but even though the rejection of at least one new game style is big, this wasn't the only cut DLC possibility for Super Mario Maker 2. In the game's version 3.0 update, they added many new power-ups like the Acorn Suit, Frog Suit, and others, and the Pea Balloon was among these. But based on the game's internal files, it seems like they were originally supposed to be compatible with the Buzzy and Spiny Helmet items from the game, as brand new sprites were developed for them, however this was not implemented into the game. There was data for other items found in the code as well that for some reason were not used to their full potential. There's data for the ability to place items like the Koopa Shell and even Fireballs on their own, which you can't do in the final game, which is quite a shame as there would have been a lot of possibilities opened up for sure. You can place Spiny Shells and Snowballs on their own, why not Koopa Shells and Fireballs? While we can speculate about their reasons, I think it's unlikely that we see this change happen anytime in a future sequel since they had so many opportunities to alter these items which have been around since the beginning in 2015 and never did it. And while Mario Maker 2 had a lot of rejected content, it may be topped by a game known for topping every Nintendo Switch game, in terms of sales at least. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which with the Wii U original getting DLC, Deluxe getting even more features on top of that, and this one now getting its own DLC, it's safe to say that it's had its fair share of rejected content. Now this is just my personal opinion here, but I don't think many saw DLC as that great of an option for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe earlier on, since the whole point of a definitive edition in theory is to include all the content of the original with its DLC. This is the complete package, but as the game started to sell more and more with it topping the charts for the Switch, many believe that if the Wii U Mario Kart was selling so well on the Switch, Nintendo may just be more likely to add paid content to this game instead of developing a whole new Mario Kart 9, which led to many rumors about new DLC, which had some merit because of cut content that was found in the original game. Mario Kart 8 has a texture left in the code for a Magikoopa icon, implying that at least in one point or another during development, Kamek was going to be playable in the series, backed up by him originally also going to be in Mario Kart 64 before being cut, and then eventually getting into Mario Kart Tour. They seemed to really want this guy in, but they just had to cut him because we obviously needed like 50 baby characters in every single Koopaling, right? But Miyamoto and others had gone on record saying that some icons were surprisingly left out of the original Mario Kart 8 but were brought back for deluxe like Bowser Jr., King Boo, Dry Bones, and more, were indeed considered but were cut for time-saving purposes. So thinking that this guy could have been rejected DLC for deluxe isn't too out of the question, and I'm sure there were even more characters also considered, but this one is the only outright confirmed character. Another key indicator of cut DLC for the original were these four cup icons that went unused until the game's DLC, wherein the Yoshi Cup actually became a thing. While it's possible that the remaining three were placeholders for the other three DLC cups we got if they weren't able to secure the Animal Crossing or Zelda content that they wanted? I doubt that, since as seen in the preview for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC, the Blue Shell Cup is going to make an appearance. Could its ideas have been planned long in advance, but had to be scrapped from the original for time? In 2016, a year before the release of Deluxe, one of Nintendo's accounts tweeted, quote, good things come to those who wait, with the hashtag Mario Kart 8 and a picture of the Calamari Desert Track which wasn't in the game. Um, what? Why this combination specifically? It had to be a teaser of new content. Right? Well, it wasn't in the base game of Deluxe, so maybe by saying we'll have to wait meant longer term, so we'll get it as extra content down the road, which didn't happen. Or maybe now, it can. If we actually got this as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, it would be so funny to me. We could literally draw a tease for a 2023 track back seven years. But while it's interesting to look at the cut content from the original Mario Kart 8, some of which is being brought back now, what was rejected from Deluxe itself? The content that may never be brought back. One of the main new features appears to have been a reverse mode for the tracks, which could have been really cool. We've had mirror mode for years where the track is flipped horizontally, but going backwards is a whole other deal, and was a concept realized for Mario Kart Tour, but seeing it in a full console release with more complicated tracks would have been crazy, and likely would have been a free DLC update like 200cc was for the original Mario Kart 8. It's possible that we see this in a future installment since they'll be developing the tracks from the ground up, so playing this mode in advance would definitely help move things along from a development perspective. A bob -omb cart was also seemed to have been brought back from Double Dash from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, with this 
file being included in the game and not being in the original Mario Kart 8. They likely planned to make it playable at one point, but it just didn't pan out and they left it in. There also seems to have been plans based on the game's internal files to have an expert level of difficulty for CPUs that got cut. We have the easy, normal, and hard options tied to the 50, 100, and 150 plus CC modes, yet something beyond this would have still been a nice addition, which, like the 200 CC mode that I was talking about, could have been a free DLC update somewhere down the line. Nintendo games are known to add harder or easier modes later down the line, but maybe they just saw this one as being too difficult. Mario Kart Kaizo incoming. A game certainly not known for its complexity and difficulty is Super Mario Party, which only had four boards in the base game, and with no outright hints given from Nintendo to add more, many didn't have hope until rumors began to spread on social media about additional boards being planned that couldn't make it into the game at release. Based on these reports, it seemed likely that we'd be getting them, if not like Mario Maker or Splatoon-styled free updates, at least in a paid form, but we never got any, and the speculated reasons to why this is the case were pretty funny to me, and it's that the developers of the game simply shifted their focus to another project. And while the obvious one that our minds would go to is Mario Party Superstars, a game that came out even sooner than that was Clubhouse 51 Games, which was a similar type of minigame collection to Mario Party come to think of it, but the staff was incredibly similar to Super, and they must have had some faith that the project was going to succeed, which they were right on. The game sold over 3 million units, and while I'm no expert on the typical conversion numbers for this sort of thing, with Super Mario Party selling 17 and DLC, let's say, costing around half of what Clubhouse was selling for, Nintendo was probably still better off going with the decision that they did. Now, as a longtime Mario Party fan and someone who wasn't too happy with the baby's first Mario Party direction that they took Super in, I would have loved to have seen some more intricate boards added as DLC. They added a bunch of great new minigames this time around, but it's only half the experience. What if we got a New Donk City map, a Luigi's Mansion one, a Yoshi's Island style board? With a large variety of characters that the game has, making some that are sort of similar to the Smash Brothers style idea of home stages could have been really cool. And there's not a doubt in my mind that if this DLC actually happened, there would have been a few more of those guys added as well with their own dice blocks. I don't know why Boom Boom was excluded when Pom Pom got in, but I sure as hell would have paid for him as DLC. We've gotta show our support for this injustice. And while it's tough to determine at this point, since the game just hasn't been out for very long, whether or not Mario Party Superstars will have rejected DLC, I think it's a very likely possibility, since additional content could so seamlessly be integrated into the game, since it only takes from the past, and there's still so many minigames and boards from outside Mario Party's 1 through 3 that they could pull from. It seemed like a really strange decision to not include any minigames from outside of the home console 10, with DS being one of the best and definitely most underrated entries in the series, having some classic minigames that it could have provided that they didn't give it an opportunity to, and for as bad as some of the other portable ones get, there are some hidden gems from minigames in there. It would be such a great DLC idea, and while it may be rejected later down the line, it's a little bit too early to say just yet. New Super Mario Bros. U was a decent 2D Mario game, albeit quite unoriginal, after fans have gotten tired of seeing this series get pretty formulaic, but in one particular way, the deluxe version of this game actually made it worse. This through the addition of Toadette. Now look, I don't mind the idea of Toadette being added in general, since more character variety is undoubtedly a good thing, and by giving her the stupid Peachette thing, she actually provided the game with a unique character moveset outside of the Nabbit invincibility thing that was in Luigi U. But the big problem with Toadette is that she took up Blue Toad's slot, and while he, spoilers, is still in the game as a secret character, you can only access him through Yellow Toad's slot. What? He's basically just a palette swap at this point, meaning that if you wanted to play this game 4 player with the squad, one person is going to be forced to use this easy mode character, which again is a good addition to have if you're playing with a younger sibling or something, but being forced to use it doesn't make any sense, leaving the idea of DLC for more characters in the dust due to Nintendo's stubborn insistence on forcing its players to conform to the formation that they want. It's no wonder why nobody was actively looking for character DLC for this game, even though if they did add the option for separate slots, I would have loved to have seen Wario in a traditional 2D Mario game, could you imagine? But level DLC on the other hand is something that seemed pretty feasible. One of the first times I remember Nintendo doing DLC was so obscure, this being the coin rush levels in New Super Mario Bros. 2, and while there were some rumors for this being done for Deluxe, it would have seemed really scummy from a PR standpoint to release a worse version of the original 2, with no new levels included, only to add paid ones later. While this is Nintendo we're talking about here, and they've shown time and time again that they don't care about that sort of thing most of the time, and their endless fanboys will defend any moves that they make, they seem to have a moment of clarity here. So that's nice. However, unlike New Super Mario Bros. U, Paper Mario The Origami King wasn't just rumored to be getting DLC, there's files left in the game for this. It seems like Sombrero Mario was originally going to be a party member according to source code, however this would end up being cut for the final version for no real reason. It could be that they just didn't have the space, but the Bone Goomba and the Spike were temporary partners in a similar vein, so that's not really much of a valid reason. Why was he specifically left out? Hey, considering how this got cut, Nintendo removed Sombrero Mario from Odyssey's cover, I guess they got a beef with hats or something, I don't know man. If this was planned to be part of some sort of DLC experience, 
expansion though, the possibilities could have been endless. Obviously, them taking the story a bit deeper and them undoubtedly adding more temporary ally characters could spice up the gameplay, potentially including some big names. I saw a ton of fan support to give Luigi some focus, maybe flesh out his complicated relationship and problems with his brother. The likely reason for why DLC was rejected for this game could be due to the leaked limitations that they were given on design changes that they were allowed to do with the characters. And all this world building that I was alluding to them having the possibilities to do almost certainly would have been shot down by the higher ups at the big end. There's just too many limitations nowadays, which is quite a shame, but it is what it is. And if you can't modify the characters too much in the story that you're telling, you've mainly got to rely on gameplay, which can only get you so far in an RPG. Super Mario 3D All-Stars had to have one of the best DLC potentials out of any game in this video, with you being able to purchase add-on games to play in the collection, like the superior DS version of Mario 64, yes I had to tell them the truth, and Galaxy 2, which let's be honest here, should have been in the base game to begin with. The fact that Nintendo rejected an idea for DLC that fans wanted would have been so easy, since if they had the ability to port one of the Wii games over, they would have absolutely had the ability to port the other one, and it's not like space on the cartridge would have been an issue, since as mentioned, this would have been DLC. It doesn't make much sense to me, especially with the release of 3D World on the Switch as a port, with Bowser Fury content being added in, since one would have initially thought, okay, they made one remastered collection with Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy that's available for a limited time. Alright, maybe in a couple years from now, they'll make a follow-up with Galaxy 2, 3D Land, World, and maybe Mario 64 DS to make up for one of them being on the Wii U. It would have made some sense from that perspective, but with 3D World releasing later, the idea was out the window for that. So the only way to realistically get Galaxy 2 on the console now was DLC, but they didn't do it. To rob us of a fourth game for no reason other than marketability and laziness is one thing, but to prevent people from paying more money for it is just bad business. And I allude to 3D World, and this game has been rumored to be getting new character DLC since the Wii U days. Unlike New Super Mario Bros. U, it embraced the idea of characters possessing different abilities, so having someone like Daisy or Waluigi get a main series playable appearance could have not only been really cool, but also really fitting with the theme of the game. We didn't get any cool DLC characters though, we got Rosalina who, um... We all like now that it's 10 years later, I guess? Well, with Bowser's Fury, we did at least get Bowser Jr. in the mode, which was cool. The first main series playable appearance for him, along with Giga Cat Mario, was a power-up, but there was one unused power-up left in the game's code. This was called the Giga Mushroom, which had a model, was programmed in and everything, and when used, it transforms Mario into a larger version of himself in a similar vein to the Mega Mushroom. Just Giga-sized, even larger than that, with the ability to use other power-ups alongside it, too. There must have been plans for this because of how well-programmed that it was, but it was left out of the main game. We held DLC for a bonus area of a Wii U Switch port would have seemed a bit extra, I definitely wouldn't have put it past Nintendo, and if they added any of the new character ideas that fans have wanted along with this power-up, I would have been all for it. Man, I still remember the speculation days before the game came out, and we all saw this orange cat alongside the others that shared similar colors to the playable characters in the game, but Daisy still wasn't in it. We thought she had to have been saved for a DLC spot, right? But no, we were wrong again. She was rejected, and we were robbed of an opportunity to see her in a main series game, which could have been presented to the team developing the next Smash Brothers game, showing them that she didn't need to be an identical clone to Peach. Huh. And while Bowser's Fury is a new piece of content from the Mario series, the last entirely original 3D Mario game that we've gotten is Super Mario Odyssey, and it has a couple of notable pieces of rejected DLC content in its own right. The first I want to cover today being some costumes that were found in the files following one of the game's updates that were never released, the most notable of which being Link's hat and suit, which would have been a really cool costume to see. If we actually got this, it would have opened up so many possibilities for other Nintendo characters to join as well in free updates, but alas, this opportunity was never realized. But by far the biggest impact that could have been made through Odyssey DLC see though would have been with New Kingdoms, and Isle Delfino is undoubtedly one that got rejected at some point. On the game's pre-release map, it could be seen next to the Mushroom Kingdom, and its texture was left on the globe of the Odyssey, which they'd have no reason to model if it wasn't at least planned at some point. But in the version 1.2 update of the game, which added that amazing Balloon World mode which you all loved, right? They added a Sunshine outfit driving the nail in the coffin. If there was going to be any paid DLC, Sunshine wouldn't be a part of it. So what happened here? Obviously one of the main reasons that fans have speculated about this being cut could have been saving it for an Odyssey 2, but it could also also be that DLC isn't that fitting for a game like Odyssey, since adding more worlds only appeals to hardcore fans who have 100%ed the game. Since if you haven't explored everything there is to do in every world, less people would be inclined to buy DLC that basically is just giving them more work to do. It's not like Splatoon 2 which placed a heavy focus on multiplayer with its lack of depth in the single player department getting made up for with the Octo expansion. It's not like Sword and Shield which were extremely linear in their main game's overworld design that left fans wanting vaster areas to explore that they compensated for with DLC. In the case of Odyssey, a DLC kingdom would just be adding more of the same. And while these are big reasons for sure, they're still not even the biggest to me. With this being that if they added Al Delfino as DLC, there would undoubtedly have to be some reused missions from Sunshine for nostalgia. They'd have to do it. But with 3D All-Stars releasing in 2020, they likely wouldn't want these to conflict with one another. With this potential DLC releasing before 3D All-Stars, the incentive to buy the original Sunshine would likely be reduced after playing through a bunch of missions in Al Delfino's updated form. Sure, one can think of this as the appealing appetizer leading you into the main course, but in this day and age, I'd expect the attitude for most would just be, eh, I've had 
had my fill. I've already played the new remastered version, why am I gonna go play the original GameCube port? This argument wouldn't really apply to Aldolfino if it was in the main game like the Mushroom Kingdom, since most players might not even get to it, and in the case of the castle from Mario 64 that was in the Mushroom Kingdom, it's not like they let you warp to the main areas anyway, it's just a little bonus area. A paid DLC area though? can't be that light on content. It was likely just an unfortunate victim of time constraints, however there may be hope for the future. Because considering the limited time release that was 3D All-Stars as we talked about and there no longer being this type of conflict when an Odyssey sequel releases, it's safe to say that we'll be seeing an updated form of Isle Delfino in this one, I bet a lot on that. It doesn't make much sense to go to the Mushroom Kingdom twice and unless they want to go to Sarasaland, Subcon, or some other less explored area of the Mario universe, especially in a 3D form, this one would be the most natural fit. Imagining if these things actually happened is always so cool and I'm glad we got to uncover for some mysteries about famous cut content today as well as some that i never knew about before i'll see you next time with another video and if you're new here don't forget to subscribe